right, welcome to the show where we share the stories of the many who intersect with our healthcare system but are rarely heard from. My name is Kevin Poe, founder and editor of Kevin MD. Today on the show, we have Kelly Fraden. She's a pediatrician and she's the author of the book, Parenting in a Pandemic How to Help Your Family Through COVID 19. Kelly, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me. I'm happy to be here. So, you wrote the Kevin MD article. Parenting in a Pandemic, Making the Best Decisions for Your Family. And we're going to get into that article and your book in a little bit. But first off, can you share your story and your journey to where you are today? I am a pediatrician. I went right through from college to medical school at Columbia and finished my training at Montefiore Children's Hospital in the Bronx. I stayed on there as an attending in academic complex care, um, taking care of children in and out of the hospital. And then I transitioned to working for New York City Public Schools in a public health capacity which I was doing until the pandemic started. And now I've been home uh, with my kids. With your background in public health, especially in the New York City school system, talk about some of the challenges both the school system and the families with kids for that matter are facing. Yes. You know, I started sharing uh, parenting advice and, and general health education on social media about a year ago. And when the pandemic struck, I had a huge growth in my account. And parents were really searching for reliable information that they could from someone they could trust and in a way they could understand it. Um, so it felt really important for me to spend some time and energy putting those resources together. You know, parents have really been struggling this year. Uh, and as a physician who cares about, you know, both the individual level of the, the, the high risk families and children and the population level of all the behavior that's going on, I, I felt like it was a responsibility and an urgent priority. Now, I'm a parent myself, and I go on my local town's Facebook group, and um, sometimes it's, it's pretty polarized like everything else in our country. Now, when you give um, advice from a pediatrician on the social media networks, what's the response to this advice? Uh, do most people agree with you, or do you get some pushback? Absolutely. That was one thing that's taken some getting used to, is that things that I think of as relatively benign, like flu vaccines or sleep training, or even um, discussions about ADHD and the utility of making that diagnosis. For some people, they can be viewed as polarizing. So I've had to thicken my skin a little bit and also understand that when people come from different perspectives, you know, they can have strong reactions to even these everyday topics. Now, for those other physicians who are also on social media who want to do the same thing as you or I and try to spread that information. Now, what do you do when you get that pushback from a, a non-clinician online when they tell you you don't know what you're talking about and, and they really doubt what you say? How do you respond and, and what do you do in that situation? Well, you know, I, it, it does challenge me, especially now that my account is bigger, to really have uh, the best sources and evidence I can, because I find when I can point back to a resource, it makes it much easier to feel confident about the advice I'm sharing. But a lot of parenting advice, there isn't good research in support of it. And sometimes when I get pushback, I just have to say, maybe we're, maybe we're not the right fit. Maybe you need to find somebody more in line with your preferences. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to vaccination, sometimes I have to protect myself because the bullies can be quite, quite vicious. I've had to turn off, um, you know, comments and just hide <laughs> when the, they really come swarming. All right, let's transition into the Kevin MD article that you wrote. It's titled Parenting in a Pandemic, Making the Best Decisions for Your Family. Now, for those who haven't read your article, can you just walk my audience through it and maybe share the story of why you decided to write it? You know, so as a pediatrician, I'm well aware of sort of the safety culture that we live in, you know. I support it. I, would, I don't want children getting hurt or people taking risks with their health unnecessarily. But I think because of the pandemic, it's forced us to have more nuanced conversations, which take a little bit more time. You know, when making decisions about how you isolate your family or avoid seeing loved ones who may be higher risk, it's important for us as physicians and as parents to understand that there are risks, but there are also important benefits to consider. And I think walking um, families through how to make these difficult decisions can help them to feel more confident in making decisions that are based in evidence, but still right for their family. Now, what are sort of the major issues that, um, from your standpoint, um, that you see families are facing during the pandemic? 
You know, I, I worry a lot. We've seen uh, there's a big uh, CDC article about the mental health impacts of the pandemic, particularly on young adults. And I think on teenagers, too, we've seen anxiety and depression, even suicidality. And I think we have a responsibility to try to protect our children from coronavirus and from the secondary impacts of the pandemic, the isolation, you know, to help our children cope with the grief from missing the opportunities that they thought they were going to have. How can we walk that line? Because uh, I'm a parent myself. I mentioned before our conversation that I have a teenage daughter who's a sophomore in high school and it's very difficult sometimes to see her because she is separated from her friends. Um, you want to give that social aspect, yet you want to keep her safe from the pandemic. Now, what kind of advice do you give the families who need to straddle both those worlds? You know, I think it's very difficult. And that's part of the point of the article was that there's no one right plan. Every family has to consider their, their children and their, their parents' needs. You know, we have some parents that are very high risk and they can't really permit their children to have any contact. And how do they cope with that that uh, grief and guilt over having to make that decision, which is probably the right one for them. But most people are in that middle ground of trying to balance the risks and benefits. And I think it can help to have a sort of an algorithm approach mm -hmm. so that instead of making 100 decisions every week, you're kind of making one decision. Like, is this a valid exception to our plan? You know, mm -hmm. we have a plan that we're going to, allow our family to do things outside and to do things within our pod. And there's going to be, you know, Halloween, Thanksgiving, sporting events. There are always going to be challenges to your plan. And the question then is not restarting your plan from zero. It's trying to determine whether or not it's a valid reason to break your protocol. Now we are speaking in the beginning of November and a lot of schools in the country, they are um, either hybrid and a lot of them are just simply remote only. And you talked about the mental health effects of kids and teenagers being remote only. What are some of the other challenges that um, you see stemming from this generation of remote learners? So I think the mental health impacts are probably the biggest one. But when children are removed from in-person school and, and often removed from sports, we also see that they're less physically active. Uh, I think on a population level, we're going to see children gaining weight. We know that children and adults, for that matter, have been delaying uh, their routine care. So we saw at one point in the pandemic a spike in type 1 diabetes diagnosis, mm -hmm. and everybody said, is it, is it the coronavirus or not? And likely there was a time period of three months or six months, you know, when people just weren't going for their routine appointments. And we were mm -hmm. missing opportunities to catch people early in the diagnosis of type 1 diabetes. So, so I think... Um, keeping kids and, and families active and keeping them on schedule for their routine health care, uh, including vaccinations and dental care, is really important. So you also wrote the book, Parenting in a Pandemic, How to Help Your Family Through COVID-19. What was the reason you decided to write the book? <laughs> for those who can't see it, you're showing it on a screen. Fantastic. <laughs> what are some of the other issues um, that you talk about in the book? You know, so I um, have found that a lot of uh, pregnant women are very anxious. Women are, or families are considering whether they should delay their attempts to grow their family because of the risks. And so I, I try to break down what we know so far about pregnancy uh, and coronavirus, because there's a lot of nuance there. I think it's, it was particularly challenging. And then I also talk about the grandparent generation in terms of how we think about the risk to those individuals and how we can work with them to make the best decisions for their health as well. Because, you know, I find a lot of parents want to parent up and sort of be in charge of the grandparent generation's decisions. When in fact, I think we have to kind of respect their autonomy and their, their choices too. So talk about some specific scenarios uh, when you talk about parenting up and um, incorporating um, our relationship with our grandparents in the context of coronavirus. What are some specific scenarios that you're seeing that you wrote about in the book and how can we navigate through them? I give the example about uh, a lot of children with medical complexity have severe dysphagia. Uh, and since mostly doctors are following, I'm sure they understand that's trouble swallowing that might lead them to have uh, recurrent pneumonias or end up in the hospital. So when, as a pediatrician, I'm dealing with those parents, it's easy to say, like, just put in the gastrostomy tube, and then you'll reduce your risk for these complications. 
But, but what I learned in my years of doing that is that uh, you have to understand the family is what's important to them, what are their values and their preferences, because so often the families will say that feeding the child brings them joy and connection and it really matters to them. And sometimes, you know, in specific circumstances, it, it's what's best for the family, even if it poses a direct risk of having pneumonia. And I think using that example, you know, to extrapolate it to grandparents, like, especially if they are elderly, they may not have many Christmases left, and mm-hmm. they may not have many, they may only have a few grandchildren. And if they want to take the, the risk of exposing themselves to coronavirus, and they understand that risk, and they understand what they can do to n- mitigate that risk, you know, by masking and distancing, I, I think that we need to allow them to make those difficult choices for themselves and, and respect. We're talking to Kelly Freyden. She's a pediatrician. She wrote the book, Parenting in a Pandemic, How to Help Your Family Through COVID-19. And she wrote the Kevin MD article, Parenting in a Pandemic, Making the Best Decisions for Your Family. Kelly, uh, we have a lot of other pediatricians and primary care doctors who listen to this podcast. Um, now, from your perspective, can you share any tips and advice um, to these other clinicians when they're seeing patients in the exam room? I would say that it's important to be aware of how much um, families are struggling and how much they want your advice. You know, when I give general advice on social media, I always have to say, like, your specific doctor knows best. So I think it's important in the brief time you spend with your patients to let them know if, if they are at average risk or high risk and to be specific about what you recommend, because they really do listen and take your recommendations to heart. I think in the parenting space in particular, there's a lot of influencers out on social media who share advice that um, isn't from a medical perspective. But I think particularly this year, families are really looking for that advice. So I'm sure your loved ones and your employees at your practice and everybody in your community appreciates it when you share your insights because people are confused and overwhelmed often by the news that they're processing. And my final question, Kelly, what's your take home message that you want to leave with the Kevin MD audience? You know, for all these healthcare providers who may be listening, I'd like to urge you to really take care of yourself. We know the, the moral distress that so many are facing when they see their hospitals filling up with an illness that, you know, we may have been able to prevent. And I just hope that everybody takes care of themselves and asks for help when they need it to prevent them from burning out. Kelly, thank you so much for your time and insight. And thanks again for being on the show. Thanks for having me. Have a good day.